When I was growing up, I didn't want to know how I got here. It wasn't, it wasn't an issue with me because I was busy with all these other things. I was busy with playing with my friends. I was busy with playing football. I was busy with just, you know, going to the right parties and, and drinking and, and doing things that kids do. When he was young, we might, we might not have the, the opportunity to talk about. Uh, a lot of people wanted to forget about Vietnam. I didn't, I didn't care about where I came from because who cares, I'm here. I sometimes wanted something the same way. I, I did not want to remind my kids sometimes of, of things. I grew up in such a different world from him, you know? Stuff that we're listening to in the electronic world didn't really have any soul to it. And Nico and me are full, chock full of soul? Chock full of it. Yeah, we're chock full of it, so. <laughs> I'm in limbo, you know? I don't, I don't know what I am. And I'm American growing up with a lot of Vietnamese culture, but I'm also a Vietnamese growing up with a ton of American culture. I, I hated my name when I was growing up, just because it was different. They're like, well, what kind of name is Vu? I'm like, I'm from Vietnam. Do you eat dog? <laughs> I'm all white, you got one? I, ha I don't even know how to speak Vietnamese that well, because, you know, I'm growing up in, you know, America. My parents weren't really around to teach me that much Vietnamese. I mean, yeah, I learned a lot from my grandmother, but not as you could say the professional way to speak, just more slang, intermixing of Vietnamese and English together. Being Miss Little Saigon, it's, in actuality, carrying the title, it was pretty much rough, because then I realized a lot of the times that I'm not Vietnamese. Like, I am Vietnamese, but then I'm not. Like, in the Vietnamese community, I'm considered American. And so, like, oh, the American girl is Miss Little Saigon, which is kind of weird, because I'm like, but I'm Vietnamese. And, and then in the American community, it's like, oh, she's just Miss Little Saigon. Like, she's, it's just a small community. And just, like, one of the events that uh, I had attended, my dad had thrown a 25 year anniversary for us Vietnamese Americans in the US. My dad was an MC and I was also an uh, MC, like assistant MC. He said everything in Vietnamese and I said all my parts in English and that was fine. But then again, that's when the separation that I saw, complete separation between my dad's generation and my generation. Because it's just like when my dad was singing, you know, to, to the Vietnam anthem. And then I was turning around and doing this, you know, Star Spangled Banner. It was just like, there's a line that cut us straight across. And even though we came from the same family, we have the same blood, and I'm Vietnamese, I could totally just see, like, how it, it's actually separated us and made me become someone else. I, I'm trying my best to actually break that barrier down, but it's, I think it's impossible. It's literally impossible to do something like that. So when people say, what are you, V? I usually turn around and say, what are you looking for? So for me, that has become a joke that way um, because it becomes irrelevant. Do I say I'm Chinese? Do I say I'm Vietnamese? Really, it's all about whose advantage it is, who I am at the given moment, be it my advantage or yours. I think if I was less reflective, I'd probably come out at refugee camp um, a happier person. I probably, it won't, it won't, the experience won't have shaped me as much. On the other hand, in a way that was good because I think it's that whole experience that made me become the artist that I am. Um, it, it actually turned me into an artist. I think had not, I, I might not have gone this route. I might have become quote unquote normal. So.
I did not want to be lumped as an Asian American artist, or worse yet, as a Vietnamese American artist. All of a sudden, as I grow up, I realize I'm being put in a category of Vietnamese American artists. So slowly, I find myself being linked with the Vietnamese artists, being grouped with them, being ghettoized with them. So I, all of a sudden, embrace them because they embrace me. At this state in my life right now, I'm actually very proud of being a female artist. I'm actually very proud of being an Asian American artist and a Vietnamese American artist at that. I have yet to be comfortable enough to call myself purely just, I am an American. The problem now is not trying to figure out whether you are Chinese or Vietnamese. Your problem is trying to figure out whether you are American or not. So out with the old problem, in with the new one, even though your old problem has never been solved. I think that the older Vietnamese Americans feel that the younger generation are losing their roots. They're, they're detached from their cultural heritage. That they, they become Americanized in a bad way. And I feel that we don't have enough dialogue. hadn't arrived when a scuffle broke out over a slur he used, the word gook, to describe his North Vietnamese captors. I was there when the protesters from UCI came out, like Bao and all those other guys. We made a lot of t-shirts, white t-shirts, we wrote American gook on the back of each one in black ink. You know that gook is a derogatory term for Asian. Not Koreans, not Filipino, not Japanese, but all Asians including Vietnamese. We came out there, and we had a megaphone too, like this little small megaphone, there's a black megaphone. It was kind of exciting, you know, and it was very serious too. We just tried to blend in for a little bit, and then I was like, okay, you guys ready? Okay, put on your t-shirts and be proud. Put on your t-shirts and wear them, and hold up your signs really high. And we started chanting, you know, we are Americans, not gooks. We are Americans, not gooks. And I would turn to the, the older generation, the Vietnamese Americans, and I would ask them, are you gooks? And they would say no, too. So we were rallying for a little bit. Something strange happened at that point where someone pointed to us and said, no, gook means communist. And then they start pushing us out to Bolsa Avenue, into the street. And people were just, people were pinching us, kicking us, doing dirt at us. And a girl that I was talking to, that was, uh, I was talking to her about the story, they tore down her posters. They kicked and punched her, like 45, 50 year old men. Bao had a shirt that said American Goop. People were ripping shirts off them. These, these things were getting torn apart. They're, they're shoving these people into the middle of Bolsa Avenue and they're spitting on us. They're kicking us. They're kicking me. I was just a journalist and they thought I was one of them and they're just trying to pound on me. It was a really sad thing to see that here, here is, for me, is my community, you know? And those people who pushed me out into the street, those older Vietnamese Americans, those people, you know, I see my parents in them. And maybe our message was didn't come across right to them. Yeah. And then in high school, it was like kind of three groups. There was like the people who just came, and there was like the Vietnamese people who just hung around the Vietnamese people, and then there was like us who just hung around whoever. And then I don't know. To, to me, like I remember, like uh, I wouldn't hang around the people who just came because it's or help them out either because like you know I didn't really know them or anything. Learn English. Yeah, you know? that like, was our that too. But it's kind of odd now because now it's like now it's my family that's. That's the FOBs that just came here, you know? This is my grandmother's first couple months in America. When we talked to her about, you know, how things were, I could tell that she's very overwhelmed. She had a lot of mixed emotions. 
you know, she's happy because she's here because she's with, with the family, but at the same time, she really misses home. It's a little awkward because it's hard to like, continue the conversation, you know, like we can't like, I can't keep on asking her the same stuff over again. It's hard to, it's hard to even talk, you know? And it's, and it's hard because like we know her and she's our family, we love her, but we barely know her at all. And how do you catch up um, after 25 years? Do you know, what do you say? That, that's, uh, that's hard too. The high-tech incident in, in Orange County, it's probably the same version as a family dispute. Because what you will hear from most older adults, the elders especially, is that their children don't want to hear them talking about the past. Why do we actually tell these all the time? We're living in a tragedy. Now, as the incident goes on, more and more, it dawned on me that maybe it's not as simple as that. And once you hear more about it, um, then you start to form other opinions. Once I sit back and think about it, I think about why the people are having such a reaction. And instead of judging them, I, I learned to find out more why they did what they did. And, and we also learn to respect that. For me, I think Tan Tun is a, a bad guy, he's a communist, but somehow when he did that, he helped us. And after several weeks, I met with uh, other young people. We wanted to take the energy directed at Mr. Tran at that time to um, redirect to or healing. I think in some way, Chung created um, a center for people to galvanize around, to pro, you know, to find some kind of unity. So we organized a candlelight vigil. We got the community together to pray for healing and also for the freedom of people in Vietnam. I was one of the MCs for the candlelight vigil, and. As I was standing on the stage looking down, I couldn't believe it. It's so many people. And that was like the first time ever um, I saw that many Vietnamese Americans coming together like that. I think that this gathering played a significant role in healing, not only at the personal level, but at the community level. And I think that anyone being there at that time would feel the collective power as a community. And I felt this is good to see parents and children coming together. I, I want to go back to Vietnam to see what it's like, to experience what it's like. And I want to go back with my mom because she can tell me everything. I can picture it. I can picture like my mom and I going around the town where she used to live. And she'll point to that house and say that she used to live there. And for me to see that house would just be, you know, filling in a, a gap, just being there with my mother, that would complete me. That would complete me. So when I went back to Vietnam, I wasn't going to find my roots or anything like that. I was just taking a vacation. I, I was curious to see if I could still know the way home.
But when we went back during this trip to look for my old house, it took us a while. It got really confusing, which is really strange because I, in my head, I know this place really well. When we got to my old neighborhood, the alley looked a lot smaller than my memory. The houses look a lot smaller. Like I, when I tell my friends, I would say, oh yeah, we live in a two-story house. We had this, we had that. And now I go back, I look at it, and I thought, wait, it's tiny. But when we found my house, somebody else was living there. So we asked them to let us go in and look at the house. Um, we went in, and the funny thing is the tiles is exactly the same, hallways the same, even the kitchen's exactly the way we left it years ago. I saw some of my old neighbors, and the funny thing is they actually remember me. They remember my nickname, they remember my whole family. I don't consider myself a sentimental person. But being there, it makes me feel like I'm still connected to my past, that I didn't abandon it. It's this rush of feeling that's amazing. I have to tell the truth. There's still a baron inside me. I spent half of my life in Vietnam, 21 years in the army, fighting against communists. You cannot erase that easily. But this country gave us a chance to, uh, to live the rest of my life and to raise my children. Yeah, I've changed from being ashamed of being Vietnamese to being proud of who I am and where I'm from and how I got there. Because when I was younger also, I didn't know where I was from. I didn't care where I was from. I didn't want to know where I was from. Because I never thought me, me and my dad had anything in common because I remember growing up, it was, we're always fighting. My dad 